Hello, I'm Teacher Robin. Welcome to another live streaming class. If you have a question during the class, you can write your question in the comments and I'll answer it at the end of the class. So our topic for today's class is how to use the subjunctive tense. So um, before we get started with that, let's learn what we talked about in last week's class just in case you missed it. T teacher Dell was with you and she was teaching you about how to be more confident when speaking, okay? So she talked about how to prepare a presentation using style, how to um, grab your audience's attention, some attention grabbing techniques, as well as how to beat your nerves, how to not feel so nervous when you are speaking in public. So if you missed that class and you want to watch it again, go to the video section of our Facebook page and there you can find all of our previous classes. You can watch them again, you can share them on your own Facebook page or you can write a comment or tag someone you think might want to watch the class. Okay, so now let's talk about the subjunctive. First, let's, uh, let's look at what actually is the subjunctive mood or the subjunctive form. When do we use it? We use the subjunctive in English when we are talking about imaginary situations, situations that are not real, hypothetical situations, so that's things that could happen but it's not for sure, and talking about regrets, things that we wish we had done differently in the past. Okay, so let's start with the present subjunctive. Okay, when the present subjunctive, we use the verb wish. Okay, and with wish, we use the past tense of to be were for all subjects. So it doesn't matter what the subject is, we use were. So let's look at some examples here. I wish the weather were nicer. So here you have for the subject, I wish, and then the weather were nicer. Okay, which means that probably that day it's raining, the weather isn't nice, so you're talking about a hypothetical or an imaginary situation. I wish that the weather were nicer. Okay, I wish you were here. Many times we use this expression when we are traveling and you write a postcard or send a picture to your family and your friends. You say, I wish you were here with me, but they're not, so this is a, an imaginary situation. Okay? She wishes he weren't so late. Okay, so we can also use the negative here. So the negative form of were is were not, and we've shortened it to the conjunction. I mean, to the uh, contraction, excuse me. So she wishes he weren't so late. And finally, I wish you were listening. Okay, I wish you were listening. Okay, now let's look at another subjunctive form if only, okay? Again, this is for imaginary situations, okay? So we form it with if only plus the subject plus the verb in the past simple, okay? For example, if only I knew how to swim. So obviously, in reality, you do not know how to swim, so you are wishing if only I knew how to swim. Okay, let's see another example if only she knew the truth, okay? So you're thinking maybe this person would react differently in the situation if they knew the truth. So you think if only she knew the truth, okay? If only they didn't have to work today. So you're thinking if they didn't have to work, maybe we could do something fun, we could do something exciting, but it's not a real situation. So if only they didn't have to work today. Okay, I see some people are joining us. Alex, Christopher, Ali, and Hota say hello. Okay, great, thank you for joining. All right, let's move on to the grammar rules So uh, for the if plus subject plus were. Okay, so this is when you kind of put yourself in someone else's shoes. You kind of say what you would do in their situation. So we use if plus the subject plus were. So for example, if I were you, I would study more. But obviously this is an unreal situation because you can't actually be another person, but you're just saying, you're like giving advice basically. So if I were you, I would study more. Okay, another one, if I were you, I would stay in tonight. So you're recommending that they not go out, okay? If we were them, so you can change the subject here, if we were them, we wouldn't buy this type of car. So maybe you don't like it, maybe you think it's too expensive, etc. So you're saying if you were in their situation, you would not, uh, in this case, buy that type of car. 
Okay, so now that we've looked at the present subjunctive, let's move on to the past. Okay, so we can use I wish again, but in the past subjunctive, we use the past perfect tense. Okay, so if, I mean, so I wish plus past perfect. For example, I wish I had studied more languages when I was in school. So this is something, in this case, you've already finished school and you cannot uh, study more languages in the past, so it's kind of like a, a regret. This is when we, we express our regrets. If I wish I had studied more languages when I was in school, okay? Another example, I wish I'd moved to another country when I was younger. So here, with the present uh, or the past perfect, we can actually shorten it. So this would be, I wish I had, but we can shorten it to I'd. I wish I'd moved to another country when I was younger. Okay, and the last example, she wishes they hadn't argued earlier. So here we can also use the negative had not and shorten it to hadn't. Okay, another example of the past subjunctive, I wish plus the past particle, participle. Okay, so here again you're expressing regrets and uh, with I wish, so uh, I wish I listened, or you can also say if only I listened to his advice, okay? So here you can use either one. I wish I'd listened to his advice, or if only I'd listened to his advice, okay? If only they'd been less impatient. So maybe something bad happened or something negative came of the situation, so you're expressing regret. If only they'd been less impatient, or I wish they had been less impatient. And finally, if only I hadn't sent him that message. So this is a common situation. Maybe you send someone a message and then you regret it. So you say, oh, if only, or I wish I hadn't sent him that message. Okay, so now that we have looked at both the present and the past subjunctive, let's practice together. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions and you can write your answers in the comments. Okay, so I want to challenge you to try to put into practice what we've just talked about. So write a sentence using the present subjunctive if you can think of an example and write a sentence using the past subjunctive, okay? So try to do both um, if you remember, if you, uh, if you think that you can, so write your answer in the comments. And as you're doing that, let me tell you more about our course here at ABBA. We have a complete course from beginners to business level featuring 144 units. Each unit has a short film, a video class, and exercises to help you practice your English. So if you want to sign up with us, you can go to our website. You can register first as a free student if you want to try it out and you can have access to all of the video classes as well as the first unit of each level. And then if you decide you want to go premium, then you'll have access to all of the course content and you'll be assigned a teacher like me who you can write to anytime you have a question. Okay, if you study with our course, it's very flexible in that you can study from your smartphone, your tablet, your PC or Mac and your progress is saved on all of those devices. Okay, in addition to our course, we have many other resources for you to practice your English, like our blog, our ABBA journal. Here, you can find hundreds of articles about grammar, uh, culture, English for travel, English for business, etc. So there's some really good information there. And we are also on YouTube, we have a Twitter page, and of course, our Facebook page that you're using. Um, you can connect to our live streaming classes every week and participate by writing in the comments. Okay, so now we're going to see if anyone has answered the questions so far. Uh, if you're still thinking about what you might want to write, then I, I encourage you to keep doing so, and I'll get back to you later on uh, today. So please, uh, if you need a little bit more time to think of your answer, write it down and I'll be checking your comments later on. So let's see, next time, Teacher Dell has a very special class for you. You're going to be talking about vocabulary for the World Cup. So many of you are probably watching the World Cup right now. Maybe some of you are soccer fans out there or football fans in British English. So um, this would be a really good class for you. Okay, so I see Zishan has said hello. Okay, great. So thanks for watching. 
And um, I want to remind you, you can also turn on your Facebook notifications to receive a message anytime we're live streaming. So that's one way you can remind yourself. So I hope this class has been useful for you to kind of clear up some of your doubts on the subjunctive in English. I hope you can join Teacher Dell next week when she teaches you about vocabulary for the World Cup. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. So take care and we'll see you next time. Bye.